Hey everybody, welcome back here to A Place to Heal. My name is Marie, if you've never been here before. And I hope that you all had a wonderful, blessed Thanksgiving. I um, had my neighbors invited me into their home for Thanksgiving and I just can't thank them enough. I had a wonderful, wonderful time. Great food, great people, great music. It was just awesome. So today I want to do the video that everybody's been asking me about, which is diabetes. And I thought, okay, let me prepare for this. I'm going to make, you know, this whole list of stuff and really get into it. And then I thought, you know, diabetes is just not that complicated. Everybody wants to make, it's like, a, you know, they, they want it to be like rocket science. And it's not. Diabetes is actually very simple and they want you to believe that it's this huge hard disease to cure and the first thing that i want you to get out of your mind is that it's a disease because it is uh, the body is at dis-ease but it's not a disease um and second of all it's not something you catch I hear a lot of people that call me all the time and they go, oh, I have type 2 diabetes and, you know, I, my mother had it and my father had it. Okay, you do not catch diabetes. You catch the same disease. If you eat the way your mother ate, you're probably going to end up with every single disease that she had. If you eat like your father ate, you're probably going to end up with whatever diseases it is. So at any point in time, you can make different choices and end up with a different ending it's that simple all right so let's let's talk about diabetes okay first of all number one cause of diabetes is what you put into your mouth plain and simple diabetics believe that oh you know if i if i don't have sugar diet i mean sugar sodas i can eat i can drink um non-sugar sodas no sodas ixnay none zip zero sodas are horrible for you they're horrible for your kidneys they're horrible for your liver i can't even begin to tell you how bad sodas are in any way shape or form diet or otherwise for your body if you are a diabetic or even if you're not a diabetic if you're just trying to watch your health the only thing that you should be putting into your mouth is what your body recognizes as healthy which is plain water and herbal teas. That should be it. And there's tons of herbal teas out there for you to, to drink from. I mean, I spend all summer on herbal teas and sometimes even the winter, I, I do hot teas. There's no reason, there's tons of herbal teas, nettles, uh, red clover, chamomile. I mean, there's tons of teas that you can, that you can make lemon sweeten it and you're fine you know so that's diet is huge when it comes to diabetes and it's so many things that you can put into your body that in the beginning because your pancreas is not working the way it's supposed to so it's very important for you to have that diet put into place to get that pancreas woken up and doing what it's supposed to be doing again so that's number one number two number the second cause that I feel is a cause for diabetes is a dirty liver when you have a dirty liver a dirty liver will cause all sorts of issues in your body it starts getting backed up um, cholesterol starts filling up in your liver if you've eaten a lot of processed sugars your liver actually um, works as a steel. A lot of people will sit there and say, wow, how can I have cirrhosis? I don't eat, I mean, I don't drink alcohol. Yes, you do. <laughs> You're eating sugar and the liver doesn't know any difference between, oh, that's a Twinkie or, oh, that's a pina colada. What it does is it just transfers it into sugar. It's a still and it will make alcohol out of it. So you end up having cirrhosis even though you've never drank. I'm case in point. I used to have a horrible case of cirrhosis and I, I don't drink alcohol. I'm just not fond of alcohol at all. 
So, um, you know, the doctors couldn't understand, well, how the heck do you have cirrhosis if you've never been an alcoholic? Well, because I lived on sugar and my, my liver was transferring that into, into that, into a still. It was making a still out of itself. So basically when your liver is toxic and it's full of stones and it's full of parasites and it's full of everything else that the liver can collect, it starts, um, a river flows downhill. Okay, I know you've heard the expression a million times, shit rolls downhill, and it does. You have tons of crap in your liver and that is going to go downhill. It's going to go into your pancreas and everything is little connected. It's connected by little du um, ducts. So it's going to go into the pancreas. The pancreas is going to send it down. I mean, I'm sorry. It's going to send it down to the gallbladder. The gallbladder is going to send it down to the pancreas. The pancreas will eventually send it down to the kidneys. So when your liver is completely toxic and, and then you're, you're going to end up having um, gallbladder issues. And at that point, it's going to send it down to your pancreas. Well, then you're going to end up having pancreas issues, which could be in the form of pancreatitis or diabetes. And from that point, you'll notice that, you know, when you have problems with your pancreas or your diabetic, you usually end up with kidney issues because it eventually sends it down to your kidneys. So everything kind of rolls downhill. So you need to start at the top organ and work on that. So everybody says, well, I'm diabetic, I'm diabetic. Yeah, but you also have liver issues. So you need to start addressing those. So to me, that's the second cause uh, for, for diabetes. Third cause is parasites. Um, if you've read a lot of people's accounts for uh, pancreatitis, uh, Hulda Clark, um, you, you'll know that it's parasites. And where do parasites come from? The liver. The liver gets these parasites in it. Some of these parasites, um, these liver flukes, can live in your liver up to eight years. These things get massive. I've passed some, when I was doing my first bouts of cleaning, I was passing some that were the size of my thumb. That's how big these parasites were. They look like grubs and they attach onto your liver and eventually they make your liver very sluggish. Your liver does not produce the bile that it's supposed to produce. And guess what? It starts clogging your bile ducts as they start growing. So you have all these problems with all these parasites and you have, you have ducts down in your pancreas. You have it at your gallbladder, you have them between your liver. So at any point, this could get stuck as well as um, old bio. Um, and then you have number four on my list is the high lapise levels. So, Usually when you have high lapis levels, it's a problem with pancreatitis. Um, they'll, they'll diagnose you with pancreatitis, but they'll never tell you that one of the reasons for clogged, clogged pancreatic ducts is, I had too much to eat yesterday. <laughs> I'm not with it today. Another thing that will clog those ducts is um, is the stones that are coming down from your liver and they get stuck in those pancreatic ducts and the next thing you know you have very high elevated lapis levels and the first thing they always want to go to just like the liver is are you an alcoholic how much are you drinking so if you're not an alcoholic then you need to look at you know stones being clogged in those ducts and that's what's raising your lapis levels but if you are drinking, you should not be drinking, especially if you're diabetic. Those, I mean, it turns right into sugar in a diabetic body. So there's a lot of things that you have to change. There's a lot of things you cannot eat. There's a lot of things you cannot drink when you are diabetic, trying to get your pancreas to go back to its original state. All right, so I'm gonna recommend, um, and. I'm just sharing my journey, people. Remember that, okay? Because I was a horrible diabetic. I had my numbers were up at seven in the 700s, and I now my 
diabetic numbers are, I'm not even diabetic anymore. I don't even know why I say my diabetic numbers because my numbers are always between 89 and like 92. I never, never um, test diabetic. Um, so I don't even know why I say that anymore, I guess, because I always want to remember that and never go back to that. So a lot of people say, well, I was diabetic and then I got my di diabetic numbers in check, my insulin numbers in check, and then I it, then it went back to the way it was. Well, bottom line is it's all what you put in your body. It's all what you put in your mouth. So if you're eating like crap and then all of a sudden you start eating healthy, yes, your numbers will get better, but then the minute you go back to eating crap, they're going to go right back again. It's that simple. I mean, that's what got you there in the first place. Why would you want to go back to eating that way. So here's a few things that they have found and that I have found in my journey to really help out diabetics. Number one, reishi mushrooms. They don't understand why reishi mushrooms work, but they do. Um, they don't know if it's the mushrooms themselves or if it's because it kills parasites or because it cleans blood or what what they found with the reishi mushrooms they just know that it works i trust that it works so i recommend those a lot to people and i also take them myself number two is chia seeds chia seeds are full of fiber so you want to start off with like one tablespoon a day and work up your way to four tablespoons a day and that gives you all the fiber that you need in order to get that pancreas working again now one thing about chia seeds is everybody likes to take the chia seeds and throw them into their smoothies or whatever whatever as with any other seed even though they're minute they do have a shell on the outside. So what I do is I put my chia seeds in a coffee grinder and I make them into a powder. You wanna bust them open. And once you bust them open, then I'll throw them into my smoothie or whatever. But you definitely want, um, the way the chia seeds work for diabetics is um, through the fiber content. All right, another thing that you wanna do is vitamins and minerals. Cannot stress that enough for any disease that you have, vitamins and minerals. Um, I have a liquid vitamin that I take that I just love because it's made out of sea vegetation. And that's the one that I always recommend to everyone because um, it's, it's awesome. You, you get all the minerals, I mean, all the vitamins, and it's also got, I think, aloe vera. It does have some minerals in it. And it's, it's great to, get yourself going again and it gives you energy and everything else i would not recommend going down to your local walmart or just going to get a multivitamin those things are synthetic the body can't process them they're worthless to the body so you definitely want to get a good liquid mineral i'll be putting my favorite up that i take and i absolutely love it and it's what i suggest to everyone else it's what i take um minerals Minerals are ever so important. Uh, that's why we recently did a video on the Blue Z water. Blue Z water has tons of uh, it's mica minerals, which are excellent for the body. I also sell a product on our website called Get Mineralize Me or Get Mineralized, I believe it's called. And that has all the minerals that your body needs in it. And it's tasteless. You just add it to water and, and there you go. So you definitely want to mineralize your body and vitaminize your body, if that's a word, because you want to get, we don't, we don't get those vitamins and minerals from anywhere anymore, not even our food, because our, our soil is so depleted. So it's very important to get those vitamins and minerals in, but in a form that the body can absorb. Um, that synthetic junk, your body can't absorb that. And it's also very harsh on the kidneys and the liver. Another thing that I highly recommend, love it. It's called berberine hydrochloride. And what I do is I take 500 milligrams a day, three times a day. And this has basically been compared to metformin. And for those of you that don't want 
to take metformin. Like I refuse to take metformin. Um, I This is what I take. And I take 500 milligrams tablets three times a day. And basically what it does is it keeps your blood sugar under control. Um, there's books that are great if you want to do your own research. The books that I highly, highly recommend for diabetics, um, number one is Andreas Moritz, Diabetes No More. The man was, he's passed away now. Um, God, I miss that man. He was just so far ahead of his time that it wasn't even funny. The second person that I suggest is Gabriel Cousins, um, the book on diabetes. There's also some videos, I'll post them down below, that you can watch that are excellent. One of them, these are my top three go-to videos and I know that some of you have had consultations with me and I have told you about these videos and go watch these videos and learn these videos and use these videos as your Bible because, uh, because they work. Uh, one of them is Foods That Kill. Um, this is, it's a video by a doctor who was also an anesthesiologist all sorts of stuff and he gives a rundown of the human body and what it does and what you're not supposed to put it and in, put into it and why fat sick and nearly dead is a video on juicing and basically it's how to reverse um, diseases in 30 days and juicing is pretty hardcore but you've got to remember that you're not fasting. Everybody says, oh, I'm going to be juice fasting. You're not fasting when you're juicing. What you're doing is you're going completely raw in a liquid form. So basically, you're just doing a raw diet for 30 days, but you're drinking it in liquid form so that your colon can kind of relax and not have to deal with stuff. So it's very easy to reverse diabetes that way. But when you come off the juicing, you have to make sure that you have a good diet in place because otherwise you're just gonna go, your sugar levels are just gonna go right back up there. Another one is reversing diabetes in 30 days, which is a raw food diet by Gabriel Cousins. And it's a great video. I'll also be posting that below if you guys want to see that. And I, I love that video. So that's very important. Or it's one of my most important ones to go to. Another thing that I love and I push, I get a lot of flack about it, is coffee enemas. Coffee enemas are wonderful because they clean out those ducts between the liver, the pancreas, and the gallbladder. And a lot of times when you do the coffee enemas, you can actually feel these ducts burping. Not only that, but it helps to increase your liver bile and it helps to kill parasites. So you're kind of doing three things all at once and you're taking all those toxins out of your liver. So you're helping also to clean your liver. So you're doing all these things at once. And when I first started the coffee enemas, I always noticed that my glucose numbers were always lower on the days that I did my coffee enemas as opposed to the days when I did not do my coffee enemas because it helps to keep those clean. It helps to move all that junk. So those, I just, I love them. I think they, they kind of saved my life. So I'm, I don't care how much people just hound me on that. I'm never going to say anything bad about them. And last but not least, I highly suggest getting on the leptin diet. Leptin is, it's kind of a, a fat hormone, but it's more than that. Everybody just says, oh, it's the fat hormone, oh, it, but it's not. It helps you to heal your liver. I have people who are not at, overweight at all, who have kidney issues, who are on the leptin diet. You can go on the leptin diet if you have facial hair. It will help heal very quickly, 30 days. Um, and I, I mean, I also have a, a tincture for, for that. And between that tincture and that diet, 
30 days, you, you're not going to see any more facial hair on you. It helps to uh, level your hormones. So if you have thyroid issues, leptin diet is the best. So all of those, because the leptin diet, what it does is it helps to feed off the liver and it helps to clean up the liver in order for your um, pancreas to kick in and start doing what it's supposed to be doing. So there's only like five rules to the leptin diet. It sounds pretty simple on paper. When you go to do it, it's very hardcore. Um, there's absolutely no snacking allowed. In between meals, you're only allowed to have three meals a day. Those meals have to be so far apart from each other and, and blah, blah, blah. But just Google five rules of leptin and you'll see it. And it's pretty simple if you can follow it. You can lose weight extremely fast this way. You can heal your thyroid extremely fast that way and all sorts of other issues, including diabetes. So that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, and there's also, and you can also look into, I've sold thousands of pounds of um, alpista seed. And alpista seed, I have a video, you can go to the little top there and there's a little search thing and you can just put in alpista seed. There's a video, I have a huge presentation on it because it was one of the first things that I did for my diabetes. And yes, alpista seed works, but, but it is not the go-to cure all. There's other things that you must do for your pancreas, for your health, for your body, what you put into your mouth in order to get to reverse, reverse. I'm not going to say heal. I'm not going to say cure. I'm going to say completely reverse diabetes. It's one of the easiest diseases to reverse. But once you reverse it, if you go back to the way that you were and the way that you were eating, just you're going to reverse it the other way and you're going to get it right back. You know, that's something to always keep in mind. All right. So that's my diabetic to you, di diabetic video to you, diabetes. And I'm going to give you a whole bunch of information down below. I've also posted a bunch of information up here for you to do your own, um, your own research. I know, I know my people are, they're smart. They know how to do their own research. I don't have to, I don't have to hand everything over to you guys on a silver platter. All I need to do is give you a few morsels and I know you go, you know how to follow those morsels to where they lead. And, and some of you even bring me back information and said, hey, Marie, you know, you forgot about this. Or, hey, this worked for me. Or, you know, whatever. And I appreciate that so much. So, till I see you next time, I hope you all stay happy. And I hope you all stay healthy. And for those of you that made it all the way to the end of this video, I'm going to be doing a question and answer video. And if you guys have a question for me, please let me know what your question is. And I am going to do a question and answer video. I'm going to pick the top five questions that I was asked and maybe, maybe 10, I don't know, five or 10. And I'm going to pull one of those names out of the hat and I'm going to pull that name right before Christmas. And that person is going to be able to go on my website and pick one product of their choice, whatever they want. doesn't matter. I don't even care if it's 20 pounds of seed. That's, if that's your one product, then that's your one product. So if you have any questions, please just put in large, or in large letters, question for video or question for Q&A video or Q&A video and just put down your question. And like I said, I will be drawing names and I will be picking the top five questions. I will be reading those top five questions. And one of those lucky people is going to have pick whatever they want. Even if it's a consultation, if all you want is a consultation, I'll be more than glad to call you and we'll have a consultation in our consultation. All right. Till next time, love one another, care for one another, 
show each other a bunch of love and respect. The holidays are coming up. It's that time of year when we need to show more love than ever. Our world is in chaos right now. So let's not add to that. Let's kind of be the solution to the problem. Till next time. Bye.